What's up, guys? Danny here, DIP Outdoors TV Reactions. Um, this guy right here claims that he uh got an invite from a Facebook group called "Leave the Laundries Alone," and what he's about this guy's about to read to us tells us what supposedly happened to Brian or how he got away or whatever. But I'm gonna put my speculations in it. I'm gonna react to it, and I'm gonna look for the fine detail, which. I've done seen this multiple, you know, maybe two or three times. There is one big key in here that caught my, I mean, red flag that caught my eye. Um, I'll get, whenever he gets to that, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll react to it and tell you what I think. Um, let's get on with the video and let y'all see it. Here we go. It happened and have exclusive information. Please stay until the end of the video as there's a lot to go over. Welcome back to yeah, the this channel. Yeah, this guy's channel. Mo the monster's under our bed. Mystery. He's alright, guy. He, he, I like So him. last night, I was sent a link to a Facebook account that was created a couple days ago. It's called Leave the Laundries Alone. And this person claims to know the family personally. And they put out a statement last night. Damn it. Sorry and about the very shit. top, sorry. it says I ain't got my phone what stand. really happened. Now, before I read oh, it, I was stand. thinking the same thing. I was thinking this is probably some random that was just trying to defend the laundries, but when I read it to you guys, you'll see that it actually makes the laundries look worse in some ways. So I really do think this could be a close friend of the laundries, or even a possibly a family member. So I will read the statement in sections and then break that section down. Okay, so the first part says, this is what happened. Please read carefully all details. The lawyer is talking now, and it will come out. Brian went home and told his parents that Gabby and he had a fight. Cassie accidentally said it. That's what he always did, meaning take a break. When they, she, was going to say fight. But the FBI told her, don't say anything. They didn't want him to know she told them because they wanted him, if he was lying, to tell different Sorry. stories to other people who could never testify as witnesses, but she messed up and said, police, that's police stuff. Gabby's dad did not go to the house. At 6.30 p.m. on Friday, September 10th, they started texting Brian. They didn't have Cassie or the parents' number. I'll put the link in the, I'll put the, link in the comments that Gabby's dad never went to the house. They didn't have the number. Brian's parents found out on September 11th from the police that Gabby was missing, not dead. They She's called a family dead. friend, a lawyer, who said, don't talk to anyone, give them my number and I'll take care of it. So they did. Okay. All right. Back to so this Hold entire on. story. Does All right. Bartolino is not representing them. He's like he said, he's a family, fr he's an attorney, but he's a family friend. In order for him to be actually representing him, them, he has to be part of the Bar Association in Florida, which I done did my research. He has only got license to be an attorney in New York, not Florida. So that's a red flag right there, but it's not the main flag. Um... Yeah, Bertolino ain't nothing, but he's just sitting there talking for him. He just because he's got a you know a a lawyer degree or law degree, I guess he can do what you know certain things, but he cannot represent them in court whatsoever unless he is barred in Florida, which he is not. Only New York and I think New Jersey. So here we go. Let's finish. Go on. Skip around. So uh, keep that in mind. So this first part basically says that Brian Laundry told his parents and his sister that Gabby, he and Gabby had a fight, and then explained that Gabby's father never. And I'll leave a link in the description below, what they had a fight about. It's um, I did a reaction on this video also. It is called the link. I mean the video is called, um, Gabby Petito almost found two million dollars. I did a reaction on this video. And the comments, or I don't know, there was a person commenting in the, you know, in the comments, and kind of threw me off a little bit. But I'm not for sure what's going on or nothing like that. That's for y'all to decide. So 
anyways y'all check be sure to check that video out whenever I'm, you know i'm gonna leave it in the description below so here we go came to the house and that the petitos only had brian's phone number and not the house phone number and the laundries found out about gabby on september 11th after the camping trip at port de soto now i'm sure some of this could be wrong but this next part is very interesting yes it is so here is the second part to this saturday the 11th late in the afternoon and sunday they realized gabby was missing and still thought brian was telling the truth the whole time he was home before knowing she was missing they thought she was just a, they thought she was a friend no they didn't they, they knew better the van gabby and brian lived in their condo not with them and they shared the van Nothing was unusual to them or to Cassie. It was just a couple taking a break. The lawyer is old like them. He doesn't use the internet. Bullshit. He has a very bare web page and advertises Bullshit. by word of mouth. Even Roberta's friend who helped admin this page is always getting confused on who wrote something. He uses dictation to type and is always accidentally hiding or deleting and hiding comments. Instead of banning people from this page, she would just block them from hers. Laugh out loud. A lot of older people don't understand social media and the impact of it on this case. And that was true for the Laundries and their lawyer. Bullshit. Brian was very private and didn't even have IG until Gabby. Instagram. And the Laundries and their family are the same. This has been a, night this has been a nightmarish for them. Okay, yeah. I apologize for the grammar. So like I said, this story kind of jumps all over the place. But I do think this could hold some truth, as Brian was private and he didn't have social media until Gabby, and that the family is old-fashioned. Okay, so here is part three. Sunday, they were learning, like everyone else, the details on the news. Cassie was in Orlando at Disney with her kids when she found out from the police and left her vacation early. Everyone was thinking this had to be a mistake. She didn't even tell her kids about Gabby because they would ask questions and they didn't have the answers to. But the protesters screamed, Brian killed Gabby. So loudly, they found out in a traumatic way that their beloved aunt was dead and their hero uncle was missing. Monday, Brian took off during the chaos with the protesters. The parents realized it Tuesday, and they told their lawyer, who told the FBI. The local police didn't find out or release it until Friday. Here it comes. They didn't see him leave. They drove to every spot until finding the Mustang at the reserve. Brian parked it in a way that he wanted it to be found dead. But if let's, let's listen to that again. How, all right. Brian parked it in a way he wanted to be found dead dead all right he parked if he parked the car in a way that he wanted to be found dead does that not say that he had he already had this planned out and the laundries after brian went and did what I mean went off in the woods and did what I mean god only knows what get away pretty much um the laundries had a lot a lot of packages coming all that stuff they found in the woods, the skeletal remains and the gunshot wound to the head and, and this, that, and the other, and left, I mean, look, they said it shot itself from, from his left hand, which I picked up my right, I'm sorry, I'm right-handed, but he picked up I mean, from his left hand. If you're right-handed, you're not going to hold a gun left-handed because that's not your dominant. I mean, you, when you shoot a gun pistol, I mean, it's going to kick back a little bit, you know, but anyways, if you're trying to kill yourself, I guess it doesn't matter, but no. That bought that shit off the dark web. I looked it up. You can buy a human skeleton off the, well, not a human skeleton, a human skull off the dark web for about $1,000. All Mama Roberta has to do is give a few teeth, baby teeth of Brian's, because that's what they said. Uh, they found a human skull with a few teeth in it. Baby teeth and your permanent teeth don't not change throughout your whole life. Just like your fingerprints don't ever change. But that's red flag number one. Brian parked it in a way 
that he wanted to be found dead. Brian had this shit planned out. Brian knew what the fuck he was doing. Because they all say he was a great planner. And everybody saying, oh, Brian's dead. Brian's Brian ain't fucking dead. Brian is alive. Let's go ahead and finish the video here. Let's see what's going on. It rained that night, and the next day flooded. They hiked looking for him one day for five hours, I think on Wednesday. Bullshit. And hours another day. Bullshit. They only went in the woods one okay. time. So, that Sunday, September 11th, Cassie learned about Gabby while she was in Orlando. No. And so they came home early. Mm -hmm. Brian takes the Mustang was Monday, in Wyoming. September 12th. Parents realized Brian's gone, and they went looking for him, and noticed the car had been parked in a suspicious way. And then it skips to where Cassie obviously had that interview with the protesters about how the kids learned about their uncle, which could make sense. It don't make sense. Right, so here's part four. His body was close to where he parked, but underwater. When he came... His body was close. No, his body was not. That shit was planted. All them boxes and all them packages they was getting in and out whenever they was protesters were there, that was the shit they was ordering off. It. Somebody was ordering that shit off the dark web for them to get his little punk ass away with murder. Which I kind of think she's not dead either, but God rest her soul, she is. To get his little punk ass away from murder and all these federal charges, you know, they was fixing to been pinned up on him. Mom and Daddy spent pretty much their whole life savings on saving this little bitch. I mean, if that was my kid, I would tell him straight up, deal with it. You got life in prison, bro. Deal with it. I'll come visit you. i put money on your books, you know? But damn, I don't spend my life savings on your ass just, you know, just because you want to try to get away with murder. Fuck that. Home. They got him a new phone. He said he lost it. I think he destroyed it. All right, he said he skipped around a lot, right? But he parked the car in a way he wanted to look dead. They went in there and found, the way I see it, his body was close to where he parked at, but underwater. Okay, hear me out. The flood didn't come, it, it rained, but it didn't flood like two days, three days later. This was like the next day, I think. When he came home from in the woods after they found him, he rode back with, he didn't ride back with Mama in the Mustang. He rode back with Daddy because Daddy got tinted windows. And then they went and got him a new phone because he said he lost it. Makes a little bit better sense, I think. That's what they meant to say. But they're trying to cover up for him. But this ain't all the truth, I guarantee you. They're just trying to cover up to make him look like he was dead because that's what the crooked-ass FBI said. We're going to tell everybody he's dead because, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what the FBI said. I hate the FBI. I think they're most crooked as law enforcement agency there is. But that's my opinion. Anyways, let's finish finish up. They bought him a new one on their plan at at and You buy a burner phone at Walmart. See? I've had several, not at at and they bought him a burner camp. phone. Why the so fuck? I mean, if he's phone, dead, why? If he found, if he found him, oh, shit. It. If you found him, found his body underwater, why would you go buy him a new phone? Why would you go put a new phone on your plan? His old phone, he left that old phone that he had whenever he was with Gabby, when he came home from Wyoming, he left it, that phone at the house. Whenever he left, that little bitch had the, the new phone with him. He was talking to mom and daddy, communicating, telling, hey, asking them what's going on, blah, 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 blah. Telling them, hey, they're saying, oh, well, Brian, they're on this side of the park. Go to that side. They're on that side of the park. Come back to this side. Come on, man. You had a gun. You could, I mean, you had a gator come in. Pop, shoot that bitch. That's probably what he was eating on out there, gators and hogs. I mean, come on, man. Why else would you take a gun in the woods? You, Brian's too much of a coward to kill himself. Anyway, here we go. The phone in his wall was left behind. Bullshit. He was dead in the reserve with no phone. 
That's, That's a lie. Never tried to go on TV or find him. Bullshit. He possibly took his gun, and it'll probably come out that he. He took. I thought he took Daddy's gun, huh? Inflicted gunshot wound. He took Daddy's That's gun. That's my speculation. Bullshit. They took the car, so it didn't get See, towed. See, this one. It had been knowing that there's. Some... It's all premeditated with him. Premeditated. They probably they said it's gonna probably be a self-inflicted gunshot wound, but self-inflicted gunshot wound. This was out a couple days, I mean a few days after they found him, or supposedly found him, you know? Come on now, how do they know there's going to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound? They don't know. They knew because they bought that skull and shit off the freaking dark web, man. Mama put, gave the uncle of a dentist the skull and says, hey, here's a couple of Brian's baby teeth. Play them in there, and a, you know, play a few up in there. This is the only ones I have. And that's what they did. Then they went in there planted this shit because if because there's the dogs the cadaver dogs will smell rotting or human flat right i hate to say it like that rotting human flesh in up to two foot of water three foot of water something like that and they was all over that place where brian was why didn't they smell it hmm? because it didn't have no flesh on it. It was just a white, bleached out white skull that somebody probably shot, play like it, set it on the ground while they was in there, shot it, and didn't realize it was on the left side because Brian's right-handed. Mm-hmm. They just left it and dropped, I mean, I mean, they said it was a gun there, but come on. Probably a BB pistol because you ain't going to just leave it, drop a Glock or Smith and Wesson or Beretta, whatever gun you have, down right there. I wouldn't make no. Don't make any sense. But anyways, here we go. Sorry. I was probably dead this whole time. He ain't dead. Their lawyer was going to give a press conference to clear them, but the FBI told him to cancel it. Yes. They reopened the park today, and yesterday they told their attorney they were going to look where they thought Brian is. Yeah. Now can search. Go search where. Go look where they thought Brian would be. Okay. They knew where that shit was at, cause when um, Chris went in there with that one guy. On the John Deere Gator and WFLA's flying around in a chopper up, you know, above them, in you know, in the wood, I and mean, trying to trying to figure out where they're at. They're nowhere to be found. They're in there throwing that shit around and making it look like it was a suicide, so Brian can get his little ass away with murder. Lord forbid. I mean, Lord rest her soul. I, I don't think she's dead. I really don't, because. Things don't add up. If you think about it really hard, and I've been doing, I mean, I pay attention to a lot of details and stuff. But I do not think she is dead at all. But uh, that's another video. I'm working on that video now. With the, I mean, with, so that's another video in the coming. But I don't think she's dead. They went in there, threw that crap around that they ordered off the dark web to make it look like it was. Uh, like he, was, like he committed suicide. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Here we go. The police met with them. So they say that Brian got rid of his old phone and needed a new one. So they got one at AT&T. Then it skips to after he had left. It claims that they knew that he was dead in the reserve. He no was phone. not dead in That's the reserve. They never went to go look for him. They said it was possible he took his gun. And either shot himself or hung himself. That bitch ain't did they shit. They that since they opened the park that they knew he was dead and they wanted to go help him find him. Bullshit. It's pretty interesting. No, it was interesting because they lied about it. Five. Here we go. Chris took the police through an area and they zigzagged. He took the police through. He to... found a bag and two items. That's right. Here's he where it gets sketchier. And they put the items in the bag because there was a reporter there. He gave the Wouldn't that be tampering it with evidence? You know, I mean, come on now. If that was me, you, whoever is watching this video, was to pick up a bag 
and find something else and put it in the bag, we will get charged with tampering with evidence. Tell me this shit ain't planned out. They knew what was going on. The police knew what was going on. FBI knew what was going on. Well, I won't say the FBI probably didn't, but I don't know. They may have. They had a part of it, a big part. Because the reason they went ahead and did that search thing, the laundries went ahead and went in there and tried to find him, is because the FBI was spending too much money and too much and had too much manpower in them woods trying to find somebody that wasn't there. They said, all right, here we go. We're going to tell him, but we found him, and that way we can let it go. It, it'll die down, and we can continue our investigation and continue our search on our own time, which this case has been drug out from day one, pretty much. I mean, that's what I think. They was running out of money. They was running out of manpower, and they, didn't, they, and they had to do something snappy, quick. So they told the laundries, hey, look. We got to do it. Here we go. We mean, we let you know when we find him. But that's not what they're telling us. I mean, I think outside the lines. I'm going inside. I mean, I, I they pay a super amount of attention to detail. And the details tells everything. It's not the main story. I mean, I pay attention to that too. But the main story tells you a lot. But the little defined details, that I mean, they're skipping over. And make, they're trying to make it. It jumps around. They're trying to jump it around a little bit here on this on this with this guy's reading here to make it uh sound like he is dead which he's not so here we go let's finish it up it ain't got that much here it, they gave it to the police it was a white dry bag that protects items being waterproof the police told chris and roberta to go home because they found something mm. it was Brian's backpack in his skull in his skull went home, Bull crap. and it was reported that the protesters were screaming Brian is rotting in hell, and they became emotional and, and broke, broke down. down. One single tear. Whoopie do. I will try to answer any questions that are respectful. You wouldn't be nasty. All right, that's it. Go I'm going to go kill it right here. Page. But yeah, I mean, one they shed one tear, and Roberta wiped it away from Chris, and, and it was Chris. Roberta wiped it from Chris's eye, I mean, face. As far as I know, Roberta didn't shed a tear. Brian's not dead. Brian is on the loose somewhere. But the last I heard, Brian was in my hometown, Mobile, Alabama, about 20 minutes south from where I live. So, I don't know. But if I see Brian Laundry and Brian, if you happen to watch this, so help me God, you better hope I don't get close to you because I'm knocking your fucking block off, son. I swear to God, and I ain't scared. You better know how to fight, bro. That's all I got to say. But anyways, Brian's not dead. And they just, on this, in the very beginning, the number one main flag, red flag that I saw was Brian parked the car in a way he wanted to look dead. That tells you right there, he, I mean, he ran, he parked the car and took off somewhere. But anyways, if you ain't subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit that like, that notification bell. And please give some comments. Let me know, y'all comment and let me know what y'all think. Because that shit don't make sense worth a crap. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. But you gotta put it, I mean, you gotta put it in order yourself. You make in order to, uh, Make it make sense. But uh, until then, this is Danny, DIP Outdoors TV and Reactions, signing off. Peace.